Meow. Do you like my new hat? It has ears. They're full of foam or something. Do you see that? It says meow. This is my birthday gift from Dom. I think I should put whiskers or something on it. Maybe some little white tufts up in the ear. But isn't it cute? I'm not a baseball hat person, but oh my gosh. I think it's adorable. I just want to know, does this now mean that I have nine lives? What I've just shown you are the hills where I'll be doing my hill training in preparation for the long hike this summer. This is a pathway through a local community park where I like to come and walk. And then the hills all sort of meander off the side of the, this pathway all the way down the hills. And there's about eight or nine of them on either side in total. So it's excellent for hill training. And then of course, I'll show you in a moment, there's a ski hill where I like to walk up and down and do hill training as well. Today I'm just kind of getting a look at the terrain to see how wet it is. I don't suspect I'll start these hills just yet because I need to just get hiking again. Uh, but definitely next month, starting early May, I'll be out here every day. And the idea is to begin hiking without carrying anything other than my purse and then eventually carrying a backpack with about six or eight pounds of water and slowly building up to the finished weight that I'll be carrying throughout my hike. And of course, before I even get to that point, I need to do some upper body resistance training to build upper body muscular strength and endurance. It's very windy and cold up here on this ridge, but down below where I showed you the images in the valley, it's a lot more sheltered because of the trees. So that's where I'm gonna head next. But before I do, I will show you the ski hill where I like to do a lot of my hill climbing as well. I'm at the bottom of the ski hill. There's that run there, and then there's that run, and then there's a little side run right there. Each of those trails is slightly different in the summer. Uh, that tends to be a little more challenging because it's got more divots. This one's just a straight hill. Those are the hills I will just walk up and down and up and down and up and down for about a good half hour to an hour in one session uh, without taking any breaks and that's a good day's worth of hill training for one day. But sometimes the more fit I become, going up and down that hill isn't enough. And so what I end up doing is those other trails, which I showed you from the top of the ridge and now I will show you those trails from the bottom of the ridge. So I have approximately three months to train for this journey and that's why I need to get out more and more regardless of what whether it's raining or not because it is spring the weather is a whole lot better up on that ridge it was cold and windy down here it's a whole lot warmer because it's plus 11 degrees celsius today when i'm up on the ridge which there will be a lot of ridge where i'm hiking it will definitely be colder uh, but down here on these flatter more covered terrain it's a whole lot hotter and this is only spring i'll be going at the height of summer in temperatures of 100 plus degrees Fahrenheit. So it'll be interesting. It's not, not anything I haven't done before, but it'll still be interesting. <laughs> okay. Somehow I have to get from here to over there and I only have a 29 inch inseam. So I gotta find a, a more shallow I made it. Okay, can we take a moment to appreciate this compost pile? This is a rugged outdoor compost pile, all natural, out on the trail. I have total respect for this as a gardener. That's where I was up on the ridge 
and now I'm at the bottom of the ridge. So that right there is pretty typical of the type of climbing that I will have to do in some sections on the trail. And that's why I like to come out here and do this hill climbing. And so what I typically do, the pathway up on that ridge loops. So I will walk the loop and I'll go down one trail, come, I'll come down through here, come back up and I'll find another trail to go, to go up to the top and then I'll walk to the next part, go down, go up, and I'll do that. In addition to that hill that I just showed you, I will do that as well for a good half hour. And then by the time I've gotten that down pat without a heavy hike, just with maybe six pounds of water, then I know I'm ready to put on a heavier backpack and I'm ready to do longer mileage. Now the interesting thing is that Every spring, I typically do a, 14, a 10 to 14 day water fast. Uh, it's part of basically spring cleaning for the body, as well as the mind and the emotions. So I will be undertaking that the last two weeks of April while I'm doing all this training. And that's quite typical for me to still be extremely active and do a water fast. And in fact, in past years, I have done 33, 34, 40 day nothing but water for day and night as a water fast and have gone out day after day after day to do eight to ten hours of hiking on that very type of terrain that I just showed you. So for that reason part of me had to ask my body if it wanted to do and if it would be healthy and strong enough to do a however long this takes 40 50 day water fast on this hike. Well obviously the body said no. However it would appear that I thought I'd be doing intermittent fasting, uh, so one meal a day, but according to this body, it's only going to want to eat every second or third day, which is kind of good, because right now my food is at approximately 10 pounds, which means I can now take half of that weight, so five pounds in weight. And because this trail goes through two small towns, if I absolutely need to stop and get some food, I can. So this trail going up, I will hit those two towns once, and then on the way back, I will hit those two towns again. My objective is not to go into town. My objective is to stay as isolated and as much in the woods without human con contact throughout this whole journey, ideally. Uh, because this is going to be essentially kind of like a vision quest, I guess you could say. It's similar to what I did when I was 18 and I canoed to the Big Island on Pigeon Lake where I canoed over four miles at five o'clock in the morning. I stayed four days and four nights and I prayed and meditated and fasted. And I did receive my vision on the last day. And I do think that this is a midlife vision quest because that was a vision quest for the early part of my life. People ask me all the time, are you not afraid to be out alone in the woods? And the answer is no. I mean, I grew up in exactly this type of a terrain. My backyard was a thousand acres of woods and all in front of our road, there was a tiny little field, but that was all another thousand acres of woods as well. The woods were my playground and even as an adult, they still are, it's my happy place. And as far as wild animals such as bears and wolves, well, they were in the woods where I played and I would go with just a sleeping bag and sleep deep in the forest without a tent or anything, starting around the age of nine by myself. So, and bears and wolves were constantly around me. So I don't have that fear. That said, I know other people do on my behalf or for me. Uh, so I did some research and I found out that in the last 100 years there has only been four major bear attacks in the province of Ontario, Canada. So I don't have that issue. And in fact, <laughs> when I was a kid, I think I was nine years old, I chased a mother bear not knowing that she had a cub and stopped when she climbed a hill to get out of my way and stopped and turned around and looked at me and then I heard rustling over to the left in the bulrushes on the, the country road that I was walking and then this little baby black bear crossed the road in front of me basically dragging its nose on the road and occasionally glancing up sideways at me. I'm not afraid of bears and I'm not afraid of wolves even when I'm out hiking just in the last 10-20 years. 
I've seen wolves and bears on the trail right in front of me. I don't have that fear. So I would say that that is a good 90 degree angle hill. Pretty typical of the train that I'll be hiking. And how tall would that be? The hill behind me is approximately maybe 50, 60 feet maximum. And the highest point on the trails where I will be hiking, the maximum height is 300 feet above the actual ground level. So about, if that's 50, maybe six times that in height. But remember, these are just foothills. They're not mountains. I know we like to think that we have mountains here in Ontario, but really what we have is more or less foothills. You have to go more towards Ottawa, Montreal to get to the mountains, or you have to go out to BC to get to real mountains. I've hiked the mountains in BC. I've hiked the mountains in Washington and Oregon. So basically the Rocky Mountains, these are not mountains, contrary to what many Ontarians believe. <laughs> of all the hills on this trail going up, this is probably my favorite. So I figured I might as well walk up just so you can get an idea of it. Yeah, I am uh, very winded. Definitely out of shape. My legs are shaky, but that's typical. That's typical when I first begin working out. Thankfully, I've worked out most of my life. My muscles have good memory and uh, they'll recover very quick and get my level of fitness will return rather quickly. I think I'm gonna go down now. That was fun. Normally when I go up a hill like that, I don't usually take my trekking poles with me. I don't have them today. I just walk straight up and straight down. I'm very sure-footed, so uh, I'm like a ram, I guess. Uh, so I don't have issues with sliding and maybe I just don't have the fear of it either. However, going up train like that with 20, 30, 40 pounds on my back, if I'm not familiar with the terrain and definitely when I'm not in shape, I would be taking trekking poles on something like that. For the most part though, I don't need them. What I do need is my knee braces. I injured my right knee a long time ago, about 12 years ago, and my left leg is prone to injury because I was off my right leg for a couple months and my left leg had to overcompensate. So I have, uh, I have athletic knee braces that I wear when I first start training. And then usually I will only take one brace with me just in case when I'm out doing a lot of hill training after I've gotten in shape. Or for example, on this long trek, I will definitely take my knee braces just in case. So in terms of climbing this all the way up to the top, which is over there, I, at this point in time, because I'm just starting out, I would go up and down that hill once, take a three to five minute break and then do it again take another three to five minute break do it again and I would do that for half an hour and then I probably wouldn't go back for another two days because I need my body to recover minimum two days three days max and then I would come and do it all over again so the weather really is ideal for me to start this type of training right now there is a river flowing through here it's the Don River I'm hoping that I will find a log that I can cross over to the other side because there's trails along the other side there. In the hottest summer months, I would not think twice to take my shoes off and walk across that river. I've done it many, many times, but 
The water's still pretty cold. I still have a bit of a hike to get back to the car before I get home. I'm not interested in putting myself through that discomfort today. Oh yeah, that's so doable. I just gotta make sure I don't slide down this hill. It's where you use nature to help you out. Be like a little monkey and swing from trees. Oh yeah, I can walk across that no problem. Okay, I'm up the tree, I just gotta cross it. And again, using the little twigs to help me along. Lots of things I can trip on, so gotta be very mindful of my step. Otherwise, I'm going in the river. Thank you, no thank you. Reach for that. Okay, I just have that distance to go. I think I'm gonna put the phone down for this. Okay, I made it to the other side, but I have a confession, I'm afraid of heights. It's just that I don't let my fear overcome me. And so any chance I have an opportunity to go head on with that fear, I will do it, which I guess kind of makes me a bit of a daredevil, but it's just really, it's me trying to master an irrational emotion. What's the worst that can happen if I fall into that river? I get wet, right? So it's about talking myself through those things. And here, there was really nothing to hold on to, so I had to squat down on my mum and shimmy my way up this log. And by the way, I would not do that carrying a backpack. The only thing I'm carrying today is my teeny little purse. Well, I was just on the other side of that. I had to bushwhack through that, but I've made it. I've made it to the trail. So I think I'm going to go that way and then loop back around. I'm sure many of you remember from mathematics class in high school that the shortest distance is a straight line. So how would I cross that river if I was carrying 30, 40, 50 pounds? I would probably take my pack off on the other side and I would take my shoes and socks off, and maybe even my pants and go just in my underwear and cross that stream just to see how deep it is. And then I'd go back, I'd grab all my stuff, I'd tie my shoes to my backpack, I'd put my clothes inside the backpack and if it's not above my shoulders, I would carry my backpack on my back as I went across the stream. But if it came up to say chest high, then I would have to carry my backpack above my head. And it's for that reason that a lot of hikers, when they first begin, don't realize the importance of, of upper body strength. They train their lower body, but they forget to train their upper body. I'm acutely aware of those things, which is why I train for it. I suspect my greatest downfall on this long hike is going to be my desire for adventure. My desire for adventure often takes me off the beaten track and onto little side trails. I'm going to have to really resist doing that because if I do that, I could easily extend that 774 mile hike into over a thousand mile hike just by doing all the side trails, which could equal, what, another 30 days of hiking? Yeah, I'm really going to have to rein that in. On second thought, I suppose I could allow for an extra 30 days on my hike, just in case. Do I really want to hike in the month of September when it's wet and rainy? I don't know. That's a whole different adventure. Another natural compost pile. Love it. You know, there's truth to what they say. You can take the girl out of the country, but you cannot take the country out of the girl. And you can take the girl out of the garden, but you can't take the garden out of the girl. I have a definitive fascination with the relationship of bugs and trees. Do you see all those little holes? Those are bugs. Hello, pretty squirrel. Well, would you look at that? Spring has officially sprung in zone five. So just to give you some perspective, that's the ridge over there that I was walking on where I was doing the hill training and where I was talking about hill training. From this angle, it looks very far away, but it's really not. Absolutely beautiful. It looks like a wild iris. I'm sure this must seem like a no-brainer to some of you that are avid hikers, but if you've never really hiked before, 
double tie your laces, that way you don't trip over them. I say that because I forgot to do that and I was just coming down a hill and I almost tripped over them. <laughs> So in case you're wondering, there is a thing called hiker's high. I used to be a long distance endurance runner and I have that same high when I'm out hiking. So what happens is your body gets filled with endorphins and the dopamine, which is the happy hormone. And literally you get a high. And that's why many people, after they go on these excruciating long hikes, three, six, 900, 1,000, 2,000 miles, they typically end up having a little bout of depression post-hike. So it's just as important to know how to take care of yourself post-hike as it is to prepare yourself for a long hike. When I was a little girl growing up, my father was a hunter. He hunted and trapped for meat and for fur. So everything from elk to moose to bear to deer to wolves to otters, beavers. And although we raised ducks, my father also hunted wild ducks. That little scene that I just showed you reminded me of the little wooden duck decoy that my dad would use. He'd put it out in the water <laughs> and it would go downstream like that. Uh, just interesting how things like that kind of spark a, a memory of joy. My dad's been gone for over 30 years, so it was a nice little memory to have. Somebody's knocking at my door. Somebody's ringing the bell. Somebody's knocking at my door. Somebody's ringing a bell. Do me a favor, open the door and let her in, oh yeah. Goodness gracious, somebody lost an eye. It's kind of interesting, 30 years ago my, when my father died, he was only 59. I will be 56 on April 10. And I just can't imagine dying three years from now. I still feel so incredibly youthful. There's still so much life I want to live, and so much of myself and others in the world that I want to explore. I just can't even imagine dying that young. Part of me wants to walk north because there's Hinder Properties, which is it's a, a nice little hilly forest, another place where I like to go hill training, but I think I don't want to overdo it. I've already been out for a couple hours, so I think I'm gonna go back to the car and save that for another day. And I say that because I know I'm prone to overtraining. I always have been. I don't have that boundary of when to stop, which is why when I was a little girl, my mother would have to call me in after dark to come inside because I never wanted to go in. I just don't have those self-imposed boundaries. Still something I really need to work on. And I suspect this long hike is going to help teach me that. At least, I hope so. We're never too old to learn something new. Are we? I don't think so. It's time to go home. I need to feed my babies, stretch, and go on the inversion table so that I can undo any excess stress that this hike might have put on my body today. Thanks for being here. See you soon.